Hey everyone, Greg Garner here. I am the founder and president of the Institute for Global Outreach Developments. And what I wanna to talk to you about in this moment is a consideration related to what kind of student best fits at the Institute. Now, while I'm willing to say everybody is invited, which is very true, not everybody fits. Now that's something that in this cancel culture could sound really terrible, but there are some pragmatic considerations. First of all, there are so many institutions and servants of God out there who are offering programs that cater to students' education that I am so happy that we get to share in that good thing that God's doing. So me and my fellow associates and other presidents of other schools, I think we all feel the same that all of us are offering something in service to God and service of our communities and students. And it's, there's distinctives and there's ways in which we're different. And in that case, none of us are going to be the right recipe for every single person. But each of us needs to know ourselves well enough as an institution to know what kind of student is going to work at our institution. So that's what I want to talk about in this moment. The first thing I would say that a student who comes to the Institute has going on is a kind of overwhelming sense of discontentment. And I know that's kind of a funny place it would seem to start, but I've noticed that the students whom God has sent to our institution, that's one of the uniformed experiences that they have. And that discontentment isn't just overall, it's with respect to feeling like they want more than what the world has to offer, that they want more even than what they've been getting in their current experience of Christianity, that they want to dig deeper. And they might even feel odd about it. They might be surrounded by other students in their youth group or by other friends at the current Christian college that they're at, but they themselves feel like it's not deep enough. It's not going far enough. They're not doing everything that they believe they could be doing to expend energy towards advancing God's kingdom and learning more about what it is that God wants to do in the world. That discontentment, one that observes unrighteousness, one that observes the, the lack that exists in the world, yet at the same time wants to know what it is that we can do to bring about transformation and change, that typically is a characteristic of students that do well at the Institute. Another one with our students is that they find themselves capable. In, in other words, our, our students recognize that there's something that they can do. They feel it. They feel like they have the energy and the mindset to give themselves over to a great task, a task beyond themselves, a task that comes from God. Yet they don't necessarily know how to create the bridge between that desire and what it is that they could actually do. And at the Institute, our curriculum is designed to help that student discern the will of God specific for their life. So while on the one hand, they have this kind of discontentment with the, what the world has to offer, on the other hand, they also know that they're, they're available to God and they wanna make something happen. They just don't know how to get the skill set or know what to do to make that happen. And the Institute focuses on that for the student. Another element that seems to characterize the kind of students that do well at the Institute is that the student has a, a conviction for God's kingdom advancement, that they don't want to be nominal in their faith, that Christianity to them isn't just something that happens on Sundays and Wednesdays, but it is their relationship with God. And they are so won over by the love of God that they have got to fully invest themselves into God's agenda, into God's mission. In that case, our students are very mission-oriented, very mission-minded. They want to see God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. They want to see the will of God being done. And at the Institute, that is an incredible focus that we have and students who share that focus do well. On top of that, students who do well at the Institute are ready to discipline themselves into the kind of growth and maturation that only comes on the other side of humbling yourself. Remember, Jesus said, before you could become one of his disciples or modernly one of his students, you had to deny yourself, daily pick up your cross and then follow him. 
So this denial of self is not typical for most people. Most people want promotion of self. Most people want to go to their college and just get everybody to recognize them. Look at me, look what I can do. But to follow Jesus, you've got to get to the place where you're like, okay, obviously you have strengths. Obviously there's something you have to offer, but God wants to develop you holistically. And there's aspects of your person that God still wants to develop. And that comes on the other side of denying yourself that entitlement or that privilege. So humility is this incredible prerequisite that includes doing the very hard task, the countercultural task of picking up your cross and really getting ready to go through it and to carry God's burden that, that is compelled by his love for the world. And you recognize that you are going to do this through humility and obedience. So don't forget God's exhortation through what scholars call the Carmen Christi or the hymn of Christ that's found in Philippians 2, Paul Apostle penning to that community and saying that Jesus himself, he did not consider his equality with God as something to be grasped, but he emptied himself and he took on the form of a human being and he, he engaged life as a servant. And it says that he was obedient and humbled himself and even did that all the way into his death even death on a cross. And when you look at that trajectory of humility and obedience, you see what that text will call in verse five, the mind of Christ. Verse five of that text says that you should have this mind of Christ. It was in Jesus and it should be in you. So I've noticed that students who do well at our institution are students who have that mindset. They are ready to give their lives to God over in humility and obedience to let God do what verse nine says. And that is, it, uh, it communicates that, and at this, God raised him from the dead and highly exalted him and gave him the name that was above every other name. You and I can be named as a part of the family of God. We exist as disciples of Jesus, Christians. We are under the Lordship of Christ and we've been given that name that belongs to Jesus and that reputation is tied to us. But that exaltation happens on the other side of having given ourselves over to God in humility and obedience. The last thing I probably would wanna highlight that we see in our students is that they got some grit to them, that, that, that our, our students are, are ready to engage God and engage the world with the kind of resilience that's necessary for growing and learning and trying to do something impossible. Remember, when you are engaged in the task of ushering in the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven, you are engaged in the impossible. But with God, these things aren't impossible. They become possible, but still as human beings, we have to engage them by faith and it's gonna require resilience or grit. So our students who are ready to grit it up, they do really well. And I think maybe maybe the last thing I can add is that our, our students have a vibe. There's something about our students. They're, they're, you You just... You look at them and, and they were probably the kids just like you who everybody's like, you know, you're special. There's something, there's something about you. Uh, often our students will testify that at some point somebody said something to them about them doing something great for God. I feel like we have a hundred percent concentration of students who come to this school believing that God wanted to use them to do something great. So that, that's really the icing on the cake I'd put on here this, uh, with respect to the kind of things that characterize our students is that they really have this conviction that they're gonna do something really great for God. If any of this sounds like you, uh, I, I think you would do great here at the Institute. Check us out a bit more and even fill out an application right there and sign up for some classes. I really hope to see you on campus at some point.